Okay, can everybody hear me? See the slide? Welcome everyone. Good to see some faces here. Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous day here in New York. Hopefully some of you that will be able to see this when you watch it on YouTube at New York Ocidians in the background. Wanted to do something a little bit different tonight where you could see my face while I'm talking. Unfortunately, it's the people that are here are not going to have the benefit of that to you watch it online, but uh, you can watch this back then on YouTube and go to the Stocks Wish on YouTube and subscribe. And the people that are here will have the benefit, obviously, of asking me any questions, okay? So as we go along here tonight, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. We'll go through the slides and I'll give the presentation. And then at the end, if you want me to look at any stocks tonight, I'll pull up the charts. And if you want to ask me any questions as well, okay? Very good. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. So we're going to talk today about capitalizing an earnings season. This is me, for those of you who don't know me. You can give me a call if you have any questions at 929-3200-GAP, or you can always email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. It's good to follow me in all these places when I'm on television. I always post when I'm on. You can watch me live, and I think YouTube is probably the best place to look for uh, videos, whether it's webinars like tonight, plays of the days, any upcoming specials. You can always go there and check things out, okay? And if you would like a trial, a trading room trial, uh, some of you, I think, have already been in the trial. You can feel free to go to info at thestockswish.com and email me if you would like a free one-week trial. So earnings season begins this week, so it's a good time to do a trial. And really, there's four quarterly earnings seasons in the market, and the reason that they are important times to trade, and specifically gaps, which we're going to get into here, which is what I do, uh, specifically because stocks have big moves when they have earnings or when they report. Now, the question is to get the move in the right direction, whether it's up or down. And that's the challenge for many traders. Many, many traders, when they're trying to make money in the market, get the direction wrong. So obviously, if you're in something that's going higher and you're short, you're going to lose money. If you're in a stock or the market, overall market or any ETF, and it's dropping and you're long, obviously, you're going to lose money. So the goal is to make money. So the key to that is to be in the right direction. You've got to be long stuff that's rallying, and you have to be short stocks that are selling off. Okay. So here's a clip. I just clipped this. I didn't see where we close yet tonight. This is, oh, actually, this was right at the close. Oh, there you go, 401. <laughs> it was right at the close. Uh, this is the uh, chart of the ETF of the SPY of the S&P. been watching this now. We've really been sideways most of the year. This was in February. Here we have this area. This is all the last five months. And so you can see how the market has been very, very volatile in 2018 because the market's seemed like it looks like it's going to go higher and then it's dropped and then it seems like it's going to recover and then it's dropped again and now we've rallied for the last two days and the question is can we follow through yes or no well nobody knows nobody knows till we do but i will tell you that it's a very very interesting that if you know how to make money you can do well in this type of market if you don't you will lose i think that's the case in any market but particularly this year 2018 has been challenging even for people that previously did make money in the market but they really weren't extremely good at what they do, okay? So I'm very good at what I do. Some of you here know that already. I see Koala Bear here in the room. He's a student. But, but I focus really on just one thing. I focus on stocks that are gapping. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight, okay? One of the benefits, though, of trading gaps or my method is that I'm looking at just a set time of the day between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern Time. In that period, in that 30-minute period, stocks have huge moves, big, big moves. And so in, in that time, I'm looking for what? Momentum, volume, volatility. And I'm also looking to take the trade, okay? I'm looking to take the trade, I'm looking to get in, and I'm looking to get out. And that's how you're gonna make money in the market. Get in, get out, get in, get out. This is day trading. Okay, if you're not familiar with that, let me tell you, when you're day trading, you have to, you have to take a position and you must be flat before four. You gotta get in between 9.30 and four and get out between 9.30 and four. Otherwise, you are in a swing trade or an overnight trade. And what does that mean? It means that you really don't have a stop. Your position's at full risk and sometimes you're not on any margin at all. And you, you ha really have to be very concerned with overall market moves. So if you're in a great, position looks great say a stock like netflix for example netflix is very very strong i like that it's one of the strongest stocks in the market even days netflix has fallen if for example the market gaps down overnight or has a negative move after four o'clock between the next day 
So you gotta be really careful when you're doing overnights. So this thing here, what we're gonna talk about tonight, what we're talking about here is day trading. In, out, in, out, making the money and being done. And the amount of money that you make really only has to do with the level of risk that you're taking, which has to do with your position size. And we're gonna go over those examples here tonight as well. Any questions so far? I think some of you are familiar with day trading, but just so you know, you can use my method for long-term swing trades, option trades, or investing. We're not talking about that tonight. Um, if you have questions about that, you can certainly email me at a later time. Anyway, so I started my own company, I guess six years ago now, and I was thinking about this the other day, since I've been recently doing television, and thinking about some of the things about myself that really are unique. I mean, there's a lot of places out there that teach trading methods or systems per se, uh, one of the other things that I'm unique is that I really don't use any specific indicators. It's not like you're buying a system where you're going to plug it into the computer and it's going to beep and then you're going to take the trade. This is you're using your mind. You're applying the method. If you came and learned it from me, if you learned my method and system, you would, you would gain a skill. You would gain a skill set. It's not a machine and it's not relied on specific indicators. You would, you would learn a skill, which is how to read charts. You would learn how to read price. You would learn how to read institutional buying and selling when it comes in into a stock in a gap okay and for example the market today gapped up i'm just using that example and there's another chart at&t gap down okay that gap down today so i'm looking at gaps so one thing that makes me unique is specifically i'm only doing one strategy and i'm reading institutional moves in the market and that's going to help you become a better trader it's price action it's technicals that doesn't mean that doing fundamentals doesn't help you. Sometimes it's good to look at fundamentals and sometimes that helps your conviction when you're trading or when you're taking risk or when you're applying the risk and, and particularly I think really in overnights, but you don't need it. And I think that's the point that I want everyone to know is you don't need it. You don't need certain indicators. You don't, you don't even need a machine. The best thing you got, you own, which is your mind but you gotta gain the skill of how to have your mind read things in a certain way. I mean, when we look at charts, everyone looks at the exact same thing. We're all seeing, oh, do to do. You know, when I'm just gonna go back to here the, to here the spy. We all see this, boom. You know, we see where the market closed. We see where the market closed every day for the last year. We see all the candlesticks, all right, which is depicted here. The price is depicted in the candlesticks. These are Japanese candlesticks. Below here is the volume, all right? We all see the same thing, but Everyone reads it differently in any given day, okay? Which is called your bias. So you have a set bias. The bias tells you I have a long bias, I have a bullish bias, I have a, a bearish bias, I have a short bias. And for those of you that don't know me as well, I prefer to short. And the reason is because shorting action, selling action comes in quickly and in a panicky way so you can make money faster as a day trader shorting. That's, that's really the only reason that I prefer to short, but there are times in the trading room where we will go long, just so you know, all right? Any questions so far? So anyways, one of the other things that makes me unique is that you will receive value from what you're gonna learn from me because you're, the skill is the value. So it's not like you're just plugging in something that will only work for set thing. The value is it's a system that works in the market forever. As long as the market exists in the US market, there will always be an open and close. And that creates the gap action, which we're gonna look at again tonight. Also, you get support from me, which means you can call me, you can email me, you can ask questions. I think that's very unique in this industry too. Results, I've been posting the wins and losers on YouTube going back for the last two years to look at them. And also further in education, oh, I misspelled that there, I was rushing. Further in education, meaning if you wanna become an advanced trader, I'd offer other classes, a trends class for one, which I'm doing in August, things like that if you wanna learn how to do overnight trades and look at things in a more particular way. I also care about people that succeed. Uh, this is something I think is unique in the industry as well. I only use one system, so you have a clear direction when you get up in the morning if you're trading with me. And I'm calling the live calls in the room daily. That's, it, that's you know unique too because I'm not saying, well, we did this after the fact. It's boom, you're there with me live. If you wanna be in the room and do it, you have gotta be able to be at your computer between 9.30 and 10, okay? And I'll call the trades, for example, I'll say 10 by 40. That means you short the stock at the first number that's the entry and put the stop at the second number, uh, which 
whether it's a long or a short, but in that case, their 10 by 40 would be a short. And I will tell you if we're going long or short, but we usually are going short. And also you're gonna learn a lot about motivation behind the system and also day trading because it does take motivation. There will be days, and I'm sure people have had a lot of days this year in 2018 where you were gonna to have to keep yourself motivated. Things may not always work out the way that you want and you have to continue to push forward. I think that's true in anything in life that you wanna to do to succeed, particularly trading and particularly making money in the stock market, which is ever elusive for so many people, but it's certainly something that's possible. It's very, very possible. And the thing is that many people just don't have one focus, which I do. And that is something, as I said, that was unique. So you've got to get clear on what you're doing, all right? You gotta get conviction in it. You gotta get good at it, which is a skill, okay? Which is a skill, which is not just plugging in a machine and doing it, and you gotta take it seriously. If you're willing to do that, you have all the chance in the world to be successful if you come to me, because I'm gonna support you to do it, and I'm gonna motivate you to do it, and I'm gonna be there for you in the daily room to make the calls. But you still have to want to do it. Whatever that thing is, that passion, that drive, that has made you interested in the market, you're gonna need that. You're gonna need that to start to do it. You're gonna need it to be successful. You're gonna need it to make any money at all. Whether it's $200,000 a year, $400,000 a year, whether it's one penny, you will need to pull that passion and drive within you. I needed to do that when I started out, and quite frankly, I still do that. I do it every day, I do it every week, I do it every month. It's alive in me, and that's something that you have to find within yourself. I can't give you the passion that I have for the market. You've gotta find it in yourself. And part of that is something that I don't wanna say get too off topic here about, but part of it is ambition. It's you have to be a little bit ambitious if you want to do this. I mean, no one said that, you know, you're just going to run out tomorrow and make a million dollars in the market. You have to have a little bit of ambition, meaning you have a drive. You believe in yourself. You believe you can be successful. It doesn't mean that you think you're going to make it happen in 24 hours, but it means that you believe that you can and you're willing to put forth the work and the effort of the time and the cost, the expense to do it, to do whatever it takes. And that's what ambition is. It's not just doing something and wanting it all to come easy and giving up. Very few people find that path. I guess the people that do are considered lucky, but I really have never met anyone that's successful in the market, never in the 10 plus years that I've been involved with the market that who has just been that lucky. I mean, pretty much everyone that I've met, and now I'm meeting all kinds of different people now, uh, you know, through doing television. I mean, everyone has gone through their own process. So if you've been trading before you came to me, I'm sure you have your story. And if you're brand new, uh, you may be scared. Don't be scared because I will offer you a support system, but you do have to be ambitious to do this, to take it upon yourself. And particularly if it's what you're going to do for your income, if you're going to quit your job and do this, if that's your goal, okay, by January 1, 2019, you want to be making this much money so that you can quit, you have to be a little bit ambitious. And I think that's realistic for a lot of people, uh, depending on what your risk is, because we still have six more months left in 2018. And, then, and like I said, now's a good time to trade. All right, let's get into what I do. So I'm looking at the first half an hour, hour of the day, okay? And that's it. There will be times I will do a late trade and we're actually gonna go over one example here from the AT&T that happened in the last month. But most days I'm done by 10 o'clock Eastern time, 10, 15, 10, 30, the latest, sometimes by 9, 35. I mean, I prefer fast trades well over holding because again, this is not investing. And also, the faster you're in and the faster you're out, you know you have the money booked. I always say it, it's never over to the fat lady scenes. You could be in a train, you could be up, you could have the stop in, you could have your going for the day, and then boop, Trump tweets something or somebody says something on air, an economic report comes out, and all of a sudden the trade goes against you. So day trading, you have to look at it like you're going into the market and just taking it, going, taking it, going, taking it, going, taking it. Now, if you wanna lower your stop, if you wanna move your stop down, if you wanna bar by bar when you're up in a trade to hold things longer, that's okay. And if you wanna do two trades in a good stop in one day, that's okay too, but I still think focusing on this period in the morning is very important. And I honestly really just prefer to just do one trade. I mean, if we do one trade and I, the number one thing I pick works, then that's it, you know? Any questions so far here? Everybody doing good? Anyways, the nice thing, the benefit of day trading is you're not an overnight risk. You're in control of your money. You have more leverage day trading, okay? You don't have to have a dollar for dollar cost. People don't understand that. 
You're not going out and buying one share of Disney stock for $100 plus or whatever Disney closed at today. You are, you're borrowing the cost of the position, buying power, leverage, margin it's called, okay, from the broker. And you don't need every penny of that cost. Now, depending on where you trade, all right, I refer to broker, I'm not a broker, but I can refer to brokers. You find your own, there's thousands, millions, hundreds, thousands of them out there. Anywhere you wanna go, as long as you can short, okay, because we mostly short, and you gotta have charts. You will get leverage, could be four to one, could be 10 to one, could be 20 to one, and also the amount they request you to put up varies too, so you gotta check it out. Depends what country you live in, depends if you're in the US, depends if you're outside of the US, all right? The idea is getting in, getting out, now we're gonna go over this gap, was a gap in T, AT&T, all right? And I'm picking this here because I wanna show you that this was not some monster move. So this was a, a later trade, okay? But it was a good one. Stock gapped down. Here is a gap. I'm gonna explain what a gap is for those of you that don't know. This is a one minute chart. Stock closed here, up here. Around 34.35, boom. Open in the morning, down here. I forget the exact price, it was around 32.90-ish, okay? So the stock closed here, gapped down. So this was a short, okay? So what are you doing with this? You, in the morning, you're looking for stocks that are gapping. What is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So the stock closed at one price and opened at a different price. That's all that a gap is. What do I do? I determine First of all, I find stocks like T, and I might make a list of 20, 30 things or whatever in the morning, and then I rate it. I have a system that goes through, and I rate the gap and determine if this is a short or if this is a long, okay? So then I'm looking to take it in whatever direction based on whatever rating I get on it. So I have a 26-point rating system, but the rating has to be 20 or more per my criteria. 20 things is a lot of things for a stock to get to meet my criteria. This is about odds. Trading is about odds. Making money in the market is about odds. There's no 100%. You're saying there's a high odds percentage that this is going to drop on the day. And that's what my system tells you with the rating method. Does that make sense? So you're never going to get something that says, I know exactly who's going to do it. No. The girl on TV asked me this morning if I had a crystal ball. No, I don't. But you put the odds in your favor. So how do I do that? I look at 26 things pre-market or post-market in things that are gapping, this was one in T, and then I determine how many it gets. 20 is a lot, 21 is a lot, 22 is a lot, 23 is a lot, the more the better. If I had 50 things I could figure out to determine it, I would, I have not yet. I'd stay with 26 points for a very long time. I haven't seen anything else since I figured this whole system out. It was a process going over years that I developed all the things, but I'm telling you as a high odds, 20 or more means high odds that it's going to drop if I'm looking at shorting it, we're gonna rally if I'm looking at going long it based on the gap. And so T here was a short, okay? So once you determine before the open, so this is 9.30, so I'm figuring all this out in this time period here, which I don't have up. I don't have that up here. But in this, in this period, there's movement, okay? There's volume, there's people, there's taking positions in and off, and I'm looking for institutional volume. I'm looking for institutional selling in the case of T. And I want it to follow through because I'm only going to make money in T if I short T once 9.30 comes in, if it drops. If the stock's going to rally after 9.30, I will not make money shorting this, okay? So I only make money in T if it goes the direction I want. It doesn't have to go the second it opens. I have to look for the entry, okay? Which is something else you learned in the class. We're going to go over this one trade here specifically. Any questions so far? And I did see T gap down today. Um, I don't know if anyone looked at that or saw that, but this is very interesting because this was June 13th. I don't know the reason T gap down today, but today is July 9th. So it gapped down again in a month, a month since. Any questions? Before we go over this trade, I just want to talk about the expectations when you're taking positions and what you should be expecting for yourself. You want to, when you take a day trading position, set a risk of the dollars and cents. Now, what does that mean? It means that the share quantity will vary. So sometimes you will say, well, I'm willing to do risk $100, but you may take 500 shares. Sometimes you will say, I'm willing to risk $100, you will only be able to take 100 shares because we're putting in the stop. And again, I'm calling that in the room, but the point is 
the share quantity varies. You can't just plop on a thousand shares, a thousand shares, a thousand shares with every trade. Because if you did that, guess what? Your risk would be all over the place. Sometimes you'd risk 500, sometimes you'd risk 100, sometimes you'd risk 1,000, and then you wouldn't have consecutive results. Because if you took five trades, four might work and one might be a loser. But if you risk too much on the loser, guess what? You could be down. And that makes no sense. Because you know four out of five winners, you should be up. Follow me? So it's very important that you set the expectation for yourself. You're looking to turn around your money one over as a day trade, and you have to have consistent risk. You set that, you choose that. You can ask me for advice what I think. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with the size of your account, all right? You cannot open an account, which some places allow you to, with $2,000 and risk $2,000 a trade because then you'd have to refund your account the next day to trade, so that's silly. So you have to look at it and say, all right, I'm gonna follow Melissa, I'm gonna do this, and you could base it on a percentage, but you don't have to. You could base it off of your knowledge, how long you've been trading. Did you just do the class? How well you follow direction, okay? And your comfort level with risk. But either way, it's set by you and it has to be consistent and it should be in alignment with your size of your account. Anyways, let's go over this trade. Entry of this trade was 32.69, stop 32.80. Now this was one, which guess what? The difference of the stop is 11 cents. 11 cents is a good stop, but AT&T, this is how the stock trades. You can be tight with the stops in this. This isn't Netflix. Anyways, risk was $1,110 in the train. This is an advanced risk. Exit 32.25, and I'm using this because I want you people to see this is not even like 50 cents. There are many, many trades we do that are a dollar more, okay, or certainly 70, 80 cents. This wasn't even some massive, massive, massive uh, move in the stock because AT&T doesn't really drop, you know, $1.50, $2 in a day. That would be a huge move for this stock. This is 40, 35, 50 cents is normal for this stock. 60 cents would even be like a big move for this stock. But you could have made $4,400. If the train would have lost, what would you have lost? It did not, but if it had lost, what would you have lost? You would have lost, depending where you get hit out, around 1100 bucks, okay? But do you see here how finding it, seeing it, getting the pick right, reading the gap, getting the direction right, you can hit something, see it when it breaks, see it when it goes, get the stop in, take it, get in, get out. And that's how you can make money. And when you have goals, and we're gonna talk about this in the next upcoming slides, you may not trade some days. Some days there won't be anything that meets your criteria. Some days you may take a loss, okay? One loss isn't gonna kill anyone. What if you have to take two? That's not gonna kill anyone either. The idea is to make money, the idea is to be consistent, and the idea is to make profits weekly, monthly, over the course of a whole year. And how do you do that? Following a system, using hard stops, which are limit orders, and I say a hard stop because the stop is in, meaning if it hits you on through, you're gonna get hit out, okay? That helps you, it's like the insurance. It's like protecting you. Now, I'm gonna go over this here, and if someone doesn't understand this, then ask me, but I'm doing this. This is a little bit more advanced. I don't normally do this, but I think it's important. Day trading is about risk to reward. However, many people don't understand that, and they're always asking me about return on investment, so I'm breaking this down in both regards for people to understand here today. When you take a position like that, say you did it, okay? Say you could risk $1,100, you had a size account to do it. For that stock, specifically in AT&T, how much money would you have needed? You take the share quantity, which was 10,000 shares, times the price of the stock, okay, which was 32.69 for the position. So you would have needed buying power requirement, would have been 326,900 approximately, I mean, depending where you got filled. I'm just giving you an example here so you understand how you're coming up with this money. Where are you, what does this mean? Do you need this in cash, in an account, at a broker? No, you're trading on margin. So there's two types of accounts you could be at. On margin, okay. At a retail account, you would have needed $81,725 cash. Had to be there to take the position of this one here, the T, to make the profit of 4,400, okay. The risk to reward was what? Four to one. You risked $1,100, you made 4,400. 
the percentage of return on investment of the cash that you needed to take it of the 81,000 to take the 10,000 position, which you didn't have to take, but I'm using this example, I want you to understand, was what? 5% a day. Either way you look at it, you would you can't make 5% in a CD right now, even with interest rates as good as they are, okay? And certainly not in a 24-hour period, all right? So whether you look at it as risk to reward, which is fabulous because it's four to one, or whether you look at it as a return investment, which is not how... It's, it's not how most people look at day trading, but I get this question so much that I have to break it down for people. It's the idea that you would need this much cash. You can still turn it around a lot, way more than you could anything if you had it in a certificate or a money market or any type, type of account where you're in interest. Because interest rates, even though they're rising, are very, very low. So the cash required if you went to a prop account would be what? Prop accounts usually give 10 to one. Maybe you get 20 to run some places you would need 32,690. This is to take the position that I just discussed. And what, what varies about that? The price of the stock. You might risk $1,000 in BBBY, AT&T, Disney, but they all cost different. So you might be able to take 10,000 shares of uh, BBBY, but maybe, maybe you can't take 10,000 shares of AT&T. It depends on how much money you have and how much buying power margin you're gonna get from the broker. But the risk is the same in every trade. Cash-wise, the amount, okay, which is the difference between this here, the entry and the stop, and that's how you figure out the quantity, okay? Anyways, what was your would be your percentage of, return, percentage of return investment? Again, this is a different type of account. It's called a proprietary day trading account. There's tons of them out there you can look around or ask me if you want a referral. It's 13%, so it's more because you you're, you're have more leverage on that account, more margin. You're getting more margin. All these brokers allow this. Why? Because they're, you're flat. you got to be flat by four. And many of these places will make you flat if you're not flat at the prop places. Now, a retail place will not make you flat. If you press the button and you take AT&T and you don't get out by four with the profit, you're gonna be in that position overnight. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you're flat every time before you boop, click off of it whenever you get out of your uh, jiggy, okay, your platform. Any questions so far? I know this is advanced for some of you. Some of you will get this. I'm doing this because some of you that ask me this all the time, I want you to know. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. This is an advanced concept, but when you are choosing risk, the most important thing to get out of this is that you're gonna to look to turn it over one. And if you turn it over four times, which this trade was, it, that's a great trade, okay? Because it's essentially like four days of trading. And that's how you can be okay not taking a trade one day. And that's also how you can be okay if one day you have a loser. Make sense? Now, what if you don't have that much money? You don't, you can't, your goal is to make 400 grand a year, but you're not there yet, okay? What can you do? You could take the exact same trade. You could have taken a thousand shares of this, risked 111 bucks. That's perfectly reasonable. You can do that with a small account. Same trade in, same trade out, same stop. You made 440 bucks. That's a nice trade. A good solid trade in a stock that didn't even have some massive move. Okay, this is a solid, solid trade. And your risk was not that great. Worst case scenario, what would you have lost? A little bit over $100, okay? Which anyone can come back from, but the trade worked. Now, how much money would you have needed for this one? Again, this is a beginner. Beginner trading risk. Total shares, 1,000. Buying power required would have been 32,690. Now, at a retail account, they have a minimum set amount. You have to have $25,000 or you can't open up a retail account. So I have 25,000 here because that's the minimum. Your buying power actually with that would be 100 grand. So that's the minimum. It's four to one margin. Your profit, 440. Risk to reward, same, four to one. Now, your percentage of return on investment is 1.8%. Is That's still good. That's still good because, again, where are you going to earn almost 2% in 24 hours? Nowhere. Nowhere at all, okay? And if you opened up a prop account, you only needed $3,269. Profit is $440. Bucks. That's a 12%. 12% return on investment flip over day. That's great. And, and that's how you can take a small account. 2000 3000 4000 5000 would be ideal. You know, quite frankly, because of a 5,000 profit account, you'd have 50,000 in buying power and you'd be able to take a lot of positions in a very price point of stocks. Now, this was around the $30 range. 
but there's sometimes we do things that are 50, 60, 45, and you know, that's a good amount. Anyways, 12% is amazing, okay? Any questions so far about any of this? This is a good example to go over so that people understand how you have to be consistent, what your expectations are, what you should be looking at, okay? No one's asking any questions. I hope I haven't lost anyone. Anyways, before you start, you should know there are many, many different types of traders, okay? What kind of trader are you? Have you ever traded before? Are you totally new? Have you been doing swing trading but never day traded? Do you not know anything about day trading? Are you scared of doing it? Or maybe you are day trading now but you're not seeing success? Okay, you're not gonna find it any easier doing swing trades, by the way. I really think day trading is the easiest thing out there, to be honest with you, why? Because the money can be made so quickly. And it's no different than swing trading in the sense that you gotta get the direction right, okay? You gotta get the direction right and you have to accurately size yourself with the risk. But it's really important to know where you fit in, what you feel comfortable with. Options are something else you can do, my system, with options. What's the difference? The difference is with options, you don't have to worry about this here we were discussing. You don't have to worry about having a set amount of, it has nothing to do with the cost of the stock. It has to do with the cost of the option. For example, if you bought an option and it cost $2, all right, you would just pay the $2 cost. You could risk 200 bucks, you could risk 2,000 bucks, whatever you want, and that's how many contracts you'd get. It would have nothing to do with the cost of the stock at all. And that's why stocks like Amazon, Netflix, very expensive stocks that we typically, I mean, rarely day trade are good for options, okay? So before you begin to risk any money in the market, you really should have a strategy. Know what your risk is. Understand what type of trader you are, where you feel comfortable. And if you're trying to move from one trader to become another kind of trader, be aware of that. Um, and I do think it's important to follow a mentor uh, at daily, not just watching the person's videos. I mean directing you. Boom, 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 boom. This is a target. This is a good pick. This is a short. This is a good stop. This is what the market's doing. Like someone that's actually there consistently for you Monday through Friday during the weeks because you want to see the results, okay? And, and, and while I was talking earlier about skill, you know, if I could clone myself or make a potion, I would sell it, but I can't. So all I have is my class, which is the Golden Gap class. You come, you learn the class, and through the learning process and being in the room with me, you gain the skill, okay? Everyone has a different level of gaining the skill, but I can tell you one thing. If you want to do well, the best thing that you could do is to soak up everything I say like a sponge and not question it. Some people are very good at doing that, some people are not, okay? Uh, you know, some people have been trading longer than I'm alive, and so they think they know more than me, but they don't know more about my system, and they don't know more about gaps than me. So having an open mind is important, and soaking everything up I, like a sponge is, good, is a good idea. And I think that it's easier for some people than others. Um, and there is a level of trust that goes along with this. <laughs> Excuse me, some people really have to you know, trust someone to make the calls. Any questions? Anyways, I was talking about this earlier. My system is a rating system, it's a checklist. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, even though we may not be doing them the whole day, that it could, could go the whole day. Big move in the day, very important, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential. And to me, to me that's one. Some trades could be huge. Some I may not even hold to one. Say your goal is $1,000. And again, this is common sense, common sense people. Say your goal is 1,000 bucks every day. It goes, 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 it's close to the target, it's not at the target yet, you're up 875. Take it. If it starts to back up, take it. You know, this is not an exact science. Sometimes things will not go to the target. I do teach targets in the class, but not everything will go to the target. So I teach exit signs along with targets because you, this is, the stocks are a living being just like you. Some days you get up in the morning and you're in a good mood. Some days you get up in the morning and you're in a bad mood. Some days you get up in the morning, you're in a good mood, but it doesn't last. Something happens and somebody upsets you or you have an argument with somebody and, you, and then all of a sudden everything changes. Your day goes downhill from there. Stocks are like that too, okay? 
So that's again why it's important, I think, to get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. Don't look at it like you're investing this, like you're Warren Buffett, that you're putting all your eggs in one basket in a stock for the rest of your life. Don't ever look at one trade as the train that's gonna save you and save your account and save your life and save your trading career or pay for my class. Although many people look at things like that. Not that it can't happen, it has. I mean, I've had people be in the room for a trial, make the money for the class and more. That's silly though. You have to look at this like something that you are proceeding to do where you're gonna learn a skill and you're gonna utilize that skill as a way to make money. Now, whether you do it part-time or whether you do it for a career, whether you do it on the side, whether you're retired and you want extra money, that's up to you, okay? You have to be specific about what your goals are, why you're doing this. I think that's very important. When I started out, my goal really, truly was to change careers, but I didn't quit my job until I knew how to do this right, and it just took longer than I thought, but I made it. But I'm telling you, I really wanted out of the mortgage business. That's what I did. Know why you're doing this. It, it will help to motivate you. And that motivation you will need. You will need to pull that up from within yourself when times are rough. You may get up in the morning, like I said, and not feel like trading and not want to get up early. Some people on the West Coast are going to get up really early. Okay, 6 a.m., 6.30 is when the market opens out on the West Coast. And say you're in California, you got to get up at the crack of dawn. Do it, do it, do it, do it, and then go to your job until you're getting it and you're doing it and you're making the money. Get your stuff to do it, okay? Um, Bethlena said, how true? Well, which thing did I say was true, Bethlena? I think everything I said was true. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, Melissa. You're great and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Bethlena. Um, anyways, I just lost my train of thought. Okay, the rating system. So when you're doing this, Okay, again, it's the sheer quantity. What's the difference between a beginner trader and advanced trader? Well, the advanced trader has a bigger trading account. That's really the only difference. An advanced trader may not have any more time or knowledge than the beginner trader, but the advanced trader has more money, okay? So how are you gonna get to the point where you become that, where you can risk $1,100 in a trade? Well, how are you gonna get to the point? If you don't just have you know, 100 grand or whatever, how much you think you need to risk that much, 50 grand, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with, then how are you gonna get to that point? You're gonna chunk it, you're gonna chunk it, you're gonna build it up, you're gonna set a goal. And you don't have to put a time limit on that goal. You can say, I'm going to make this much every week and then I'm gonna review it at the end of 30 days and I'm gonna see where I'm at and see was I realistic. Can I take $2,500 and make it 5,000 in a month? Well, you set your goal and then you do it. And then come 30 days, you review it again. They say, well, I made mistakes on this day, this day. So next month, I'm not gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna listen to Melissa so that I can achieve my goal. Or maybe you went past your goal. It was earning season. Everything worked out, okay? You constantly have to be in check with yourself about what you're doing. And I don't think there's any problem with risking more. And actually, right now, it's earning season. I say I'm gonna have this talk with people in the room tomorrow morning. If you're trading right now, this year with me, and you're doing well, and you can risk more. Okay, I'm considering that it, things have been going good. Okay, now's the time to take more risks. Now's the time we're gonna get the trades. Now's the time we're gonna get the volatility. Now's the time to make the money, or however they say it. Now's the time to make the donuts. You make the donuts now. People say summer trading is slow. That's not true if you do what I do in gaps. But again, you're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. You're in, you're out. Um, Bethlehem is saying it's a bad day is like the stock market. Yes, the stock market has bad days too. Okay, any questions from anyone so far? I see a lot of people here I don't recognize, so you can feel free to ask me questions. Or Kathy can put my information again in the room. But anyways, I wanted to show two things, percentage and risk to reward for the returns because they really can be incredible and this is why trading the market is exciting. This is why people wanna trade. Okay, because when you look at the annual returns compared to money markets, compared to bonds, compared to things like that, it's, you know, CDs, it's, it can be very high. And, you know, similar to real estate, except for with real estate, you have to wait. You buy a property, you want to fix it up and resell it, turn it around, flip it, you're going to have to wait till you, you find a buyer. You have to wait till XYZ. When you're day trading, the money is there, you got it that day. You got it that second. You have it that minute. And that's the nice thing. You can take it out the next day. You book it, done. Boom, it's there. And that's one of the reasons why I say do one trade a day, because if you go back in and you're up your goal, you could always lose it. So boom, boom, boom. 
I say, make your goal, done, shut it down. And that's why we only trade in the morning. But anyways, we're looking to do it in that first 30 minutes. That's when I find the biggest moves. If I'm not in by then, I'm probably not doing anything, okay? Day trading is not investing. You have to understand that. It's producing income. It depends on how much you risk, okay? Which is, um, depends on how much the size of your account. And also your comfortability with level with risk, which only you know, all right? But if you're following someone like me in the room, it definitely helps. It, it's, which I'm the support system for people to check. If you're, people are lucky to have me. I don't, I don't have another check. <laughs> I am the check of myself. I check myself. <laughs> but people can check themselves with me. You rate the gap. You get 20 points. See what I get for the rating. Take the trade. See if you would have taken it the same place as me. Okay? See, that's the, that's the double check. I don't have that, but I've been doing this for a long time. And eventually, you know, you want to be able to get to the point where you have such a good skill level where you don't even need the support system of me. And I have a lot of people that have done my class that are at that point. They're not in the room anymore. But the nice thing is that it's there. It's there for people that if they want to come back. I see Eric in here. He's been in and out of the room. He has, a, he has another job. But, you know, I'm here if you need me. And if you can do it on your own, you just do it. I don't hold anything back. I teach everything in the class that I know. Anyways, your goal is to take money out of the market daily in fast moves. And one of the things that most day traders forget or just don't get is that this really isn't investing. And you just, if you have that kind of mindset and you know it, you may have to change that a little bit, okay? Anyways, looking at your goals, and again, I'm breaking it down because it's, it's, sometimes it's so overwhelming. People say, oh my gosh, I have a $5,000 account. How the heck am I gonna make any money at all? Just, you gotta back it up. And then you set your goals. I mean, no one, you know, just ran outside and made a million dollars today, okay? Be realistic with your expectations with yourself because if you don't, you're kind of working against yourself and guess what? Then you're gonna be really negative and you're gonna have a mindset of failure. Like if you set your expectations way too high, guess what? You're probably not gonna make them too soon, too fast. I have no problem with people wanting to make a lot of money, but don't, don't kill yourself and be so negative if you don't get there in the first week or even the first month. Be realistic with yourself. And if you're not sure what that is, then ask me. Say, Melissa, I have this much experience. I want to take the class. This is the size of my account. You know, blah, blah, blah. Tell me about yourself. I'm willing to talk to people. Anyways, if, you're, if your goal is to make 400 grand a year, it's about 33 grand a month, which comes out to be what? About $6,400 a week, over six grand. About $1,200 a day. So what do you need to risk? between a thousand fifteen hundred dollars a day you're flipping it over flipping it over if you want to make 250 a year it's about 20 grand a month okay which is what about 5200 a week five grand a week give or take so you're looking to make what about a thousand dollars a day boom 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 some days you will lose a thousand some days you won't trade some days you'll make four you see so know where you're at and what your goals are. And these are some big numbers, but if this is your goal, I don't have any problem with that. Just know if you have a certain size account and you can't afford to take the risk as we discussed at the advanced risk earlier, then risk the amount you can afford so that you can build the account up. And that's how you're gonna get somewhere. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking too much risk and doing all kinds of crazy things and then taking trades like tea all day long you take the setup, you make the money, and you're done. And that kind of seriousness about it really will put you in a much better mindset to do this if it really is going to end up being your only income. I mean, if you quit your job and you're going to do this, then when the money's booked, if you take another trade, you're basically risking giving back the money that you made for the day that you might need to pay your bills. So don't do it. That's why I shut it down. I shut the room down early in the morning. Uh, years ago, no one told me that. No one taught me that. It was a disaster when I started at trading in 2008. I mean, the rooms were open all day. Most trading rooms are open all day long. I, I'm, I don't know any other room that closes as early as my room closes. Sometimes I've closed the room at 10 a.m. Done. Don't sit and stare at the computer. You're going to find all kinds of things you could do that look good, and, and you shouldn't be doing them. Because if you take a trade and you make $1,500, what more do you want? <laughs> I mean, that is a good amount of money. Most people do not make $1,500 in a week. Okay. <laughs> Eric says all he needs is 10k a month. 
Okay, so back it up. If your goal is $10,000 a month, what's your goal per week, Eric? Go, write it right now. Don't have to get out a calculator. How much do you need? Go. What's 20, 2,500? 2,500 a week is your goal, okay. So, how much do you have to make a day? 2,500 a week, what's your daily goal? Go, Eric. Eric, I'm talking to you. Eric, you gotta be able to do this in your head. Just like you're figuring out the sizing in your head. Like if I say 10 by 50, Eric, I'm talking to you. If I say 10 by 50, how much risk is that? If you get a thousand shares, how much are you risking 10 by 50? Eric, go. This is a quiz. If you took a thousand shares in that trade, how much money would you be risking? Dollars and cents. Eric, are you there? Or anybody, anybody at all. If you took a thousand shares, you short the stock at 32.10, put the stop at 32.50, it's 40 cents. Thousand shares is what? It's $400. No, no. 400 bucks you'd be risking. Here. And I'm just, I don't know what stock this is. I'm just doing this. Say you shorted at 32.10, but the stop at 32.50, your risk is 40 cents. 40 cents times 1,000 shares equals 400 bucks. What if it went to 32? Quick, go. Think it in your head. See, this is what you got to know. If the stock drops and you're in it, you're up, you're up, you're up. You took it at 32.10, it drops at 32. How much money are you up? Eric, you have 1,000 shares. It dropped 10 cents. What are you up? Quick. It's moving. It has no time for you to do anything else at all. But look at it. <laughs> Eric has no idea. <laughs> right now, he's having a brain freeze of numbers. Ty Gray is answering 500. Bethelina is saying 320. No. If the stock moves from 3210 to 32, you're up 10 cents. And if you're up 10 cents and you have 1,000 shares, that's $100. So you could get out, say 32 is the first target. Or you say, wait a minute, I just risked $400. I think it's going to keep going. It's only 932. Melissa just called it for Pete's sakes. It's going, going, going. Anyways, if you risk 40 cents in your mind, you would see, okay, 3210 minus 40 cents is go. Bethelina. See, if you, here, you can't see this now, but I have a calculator. I don't use it a lot because I use it for other things but in live time I can figure out numbers in my head you got to get good at this if not you will get good at this this is the skill so if you're at 3210 and the stock drops 40 cents that would be flipping over 100 percent it would have to drop 40 cents so 3210 minus 40 cents is if you want to make 400 dollars in this trade where's the stock have to drop Galahad Galahad will know or he will cheat and pull out his computer <laughs> or his calculator <laughs> If the stock is at 32.10 and you say, I swear I'm not getting out of this trade until I make at least $400, I don't care. If the stock market explodes, where does it have to go? <laughs> there we go. Eric said 31.70. Fast Track said 31.70. Tiger said 31.70. Very good. That's not that big of a deal. Okay, it's only 40 cents. And usually a stock at that price would move 40 cents. And usually in the morning, okay. But now you're getting the idea here. Do you see the idea? Now you're getting it, okay? So anyways, you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere, like I was just quizzing Eric. You have to start at some point where you wanna get somewhere. I mean, everybody has to start somewhere, and usually, and I, I, and I know this, I know this from my own experience for myself, you will want things faster than they're gonna happen, always. I don't care if it's making money, I don't care if it's the stock market, I don't care if it's trading, I don't care if it's when you meet someone you fall in love, okay? Whatever, you always will want things faster. Typically, as human beings, we're very impatient. I recognize that within myself, but I, I, you know, a lot of people actually are and don't realize that they are. They want things now, yesterday, tomorrow. 
we live in a, a, a society that has immediate gratification and part of a lot of that is our our phones everything we're doing we're so connected now we just expect everything immediately okay life isn't always that way and i'm you know i'm fine when things happen fast i love it but i've learned throughout the years to experience not to always expect that because you don't want to be disappointed and the worst thing you can do is do be doing well and then quit so think about that all right or you have you have this dream your dream is to trade the stock market your dream is to trade and yet you want to quit why because you haven't had success you've had no success limited none or bad times it's 2018 is july and you're at the point where things aren't going great and you want to quit but you still have this dream don't give up and don't be afraid to ask for help you know i i talk to a lot of people and you know most of them are men some are women i find women make good students because they're willing to listen to me but most of my clients are men don't be afraid to ask for help there's nothing there's no shame in that you're not stupid if you need to take a trading class to learn how to make money you're not stupid if you're older than me and need to take my class you're not stupid if you've lost money in the market a lot of people have most have quite frankly and no one that i know or ever i've ever met has ever just run out tomorrow and open up a trading account and made money without ever losing. I went through my process myself a long time ago now. But the point is, everybody does, and you can't be afraid to ask for help, and there's no shame in that. None whatsoever. So don't feel too proud to do that or to have to learn a system or do something. And you're going to be better off in the long run because if you're throwing money in the market and you're trading and you really are not getting anywhere with it, you're really basically wasting your time. And, and if you want to waste your time, then fine. But I, personally, I think it's stupid. So you're better off just taking your money and going to Atlantic City and, you know, going out for the night and having a good time. Any questions? Think about what I said. You definitely have to want it. Okay? You will not change your situation just sitting and listening and waiting and doing nothing. It's half the year is gone. It's really very hard to believe. Um, and you have to take the right steps in the right direction to get somewhere with this if you really want to do well with it. So if you want to work for yourself, you can do it. You can have financial freedom. It's up to you. I teach a class. The class is in July. New date for the class is July 21st and 22nd. It's 9 to 5 Eastern time. The class is online. You would do the class from home with a computer. You could trade from home with a computer. You could trade at your office. Okay. You chunk it out. Any questions? If you're interested, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. As I said, my system is called the Golden Gap. You will learn a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you find which stock to trade each morning and in what direction. You use the checklist. That's how I know what to do, what to trade, okay? And it predicts the directional bias of a stock. It's also how I predicted the market. Anything that gaps, anything that has an open and close, any ETF, any stock, you can use it with. You can use it for options, swing trades, or day trades. But if you want to be with me in the room, we focus on the daily day trades in and out, okay? I really think it's important to focus on one thing. I don't think knowing a lot of information in the market helps you. So if you're new, don't be scared and overwhelmed that you have to learn so much. You really don't. Uh, honestly, I think sometimes the less you know, the better in that sense, because you won't be strayed and hear all kinds of things and then... I have people in the trading room that focus on things they should not be focusing on and that make mistakes, all right? It's actually common sense that that when you when you do my class, if you come and learn from me and you learn it, you're gonna be like, oh, my Atlanta. You know, a lot of the things that I see when I'm looking at something and I'm reading it is based on common sense. It's something that traders lack and it's one of the reasons for my success. We're looking at institutional money. We're looking at the price patterns. We're looking at technical analysis and focusing on gaps. That's how I make the choice of every trade. Everything I do, everything is based on gaps, okay? And I do prefer to short. If you've got time or if you want to know when you're going to have to do it, it's 9.30 and 10 Eastern. You've got to be at your computer to trade then, in and out, okay? Do it from home. Do it from your office. You have to have a computer. You have to set up a brokerage account. You can ask me for a referral. You don't need it before the class. Again, class is in two weeks. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's $5,499 US dollars. Class is online, and you must email me for the forms to register, okay? And that's Saturday and Sunday, depending on where you're at in the world, 9 to 5. Any questions from anyone? And then I do have the Trends class. This is August 6th. 
Okay, this would be after this class, after the Golden Gap. If you sign up for both, you save five hundred dollars. Fifty nine ninety nine. This class is normally a thousand dollars for the trends, and that's going to be a full day class on the sixth. Any questions from anyone? We're right up against the time here, but yeah, I talked a long time. This was good tonight. Does anyone want to ask me anything specifically? New people, old people? Kathy? Good job tonight. I quizzed some of you. One free retake, Koala Bear. One free retake for the class. After that, if you want to sign up for a retake, it's $1,000 for day one, $500 for day two. Eric wants more information on the trends class. Eric, I thought you did that class. Um, let me quick pull up charts. Bethelina, if you want a broker referral, email me. You, st you have to have cash to open up a margin account. Oh, actually, let's go to T. You have to have cash to open up a mar uh, an account at all with whatever margin you get. Yes. Yes. Don, I don't have that right now because I'm recording this. If I click off of it, it'll screw up the recording. Email me. I will get that when we're done and email that to you. I'll just send you the YouTube link. Um, I think about 2500 is for a starter retake. Koala Bear, I've been charging for retakes for more than a year. Um, might be two years now, I don't even remember anymore. Okay, uh, Eric had asked about trends class. So basically, look at this. Here, let's look at AT&T. What do you think of that? Hey, Eric, where are you? You you would learn how to read trends in a chart in the trends class, which would be helpful for what? It would be helpful for definitely for overnights, whether you do options or swing trades. That it's critical key. And secondly, it would enhance your day trading. What trend do you think uh, this is in, this T? Anybody, anybody at all. But Eric, I'm asking you, Eric. I thought you did this class, maybe you didn't. What do you think, what, what, what T is in what? Close of 32.18, that's true. What's the, first of all, there's only three trends. Kathy's going to kick me out here soon, so we have to do this quick. What are the three possible things that a stock could be in? Uptrend, downtrend, neutral. That's it. You only got three options. So pick one. What do you think? Uptrend, downtrend, neutral. AT&T. Russ says down. Uh, Eric Bell says sideways. Bethelina says down. Eric says neutral. Anybody else? We can look at that black too. Yeah, sure. I think we can all agree it's not in an uptrend. Pretty much. We can no one here would think that, right? Correct? Nobody nobody would say this isn't an uptrend, right? Okay. Well that's good. Good job, people. It's not in an uptrend. And actually, Eric is right. Um, and the other guy that said something here, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something about. He said it was a downtrend. This, to be to be specific, to be technical, the stock is in a neutral trend. And but guess what? That's rare. It's very very rare for stock to ever 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 be in a neutral trend. It doesn't last that long. But interestingly enough, hasn't it for the stock? I don't think it's gonna last. Eventually, the stock is gonna do something. It could move up. It could move down. So. If you go long here, you're taking a chance. Why? Because it's not an uptrend. Could it hold this area here? You can see the area it's trying to hold. It's right around where it is right now. Could it hold this? Could it be a good buy? Could it rally all the way up to 40? Could you make $10 in a move in this long? Sure. But it might not. It might drop and break. Because in, the point is that it's not in an uptrend. It's, it's really not in a downtrend yet. But that could happen because the stock is struggling and it is neutral. Now, based on that, 
I'm telling you, the market has been, you know, the market's been crazy for the last five months since 2000 and beginning of 2018, since February. So you can't really get a lot out of the fact that this isn't necessarily moving higher. It hasn't had any help at all from the market and a lot of, you know, new stuff that's going on. So I definitely would not say this is a long hair, but I wouldn't just jump in and short it because it could hold and it might rally. But technically speaking, to be specifically and to be correct, the stock is neutral. And that is very, very rare. Anyways, you learn how I figure that out in that trends class. And that is important. And I wouldn't take a position in anything that's in a neutral trend. And this is rare. I didn't even really know that when I, when I decided to pick this one, but I did. <clears throat> what do you want to look at? Aflac, Gov? Just one more quick one here, Bethelina, and then I'll let you go. What do you want to do with this? Here, I, I don't know why you're asking me about this, Bethelina, but what do you want to do with this one here? The Gov one? 